I get very scared when somebody succeeds with their first film. So there's so many things that you are going to face, which I don't think you're prepared for. No one knows it to you. You want to be a filmmaker, it's only your responsibility. I, I know how good this institute is because I've never heard students cheer for their teachers so much. <laughs> I've traveled across the country and when students are so happy and hooting and cheering for their teachers, you know it's a good place. You know they're going to create a lot, many filmmakers here. All, all of you are going to be filmmakers now. So first thing I'll say, welcome to a life of insecurity. <laughs> And it's consistent insecurity, and I think you should you should fear the day you feel secure. I, I I get very scared when somebody succeeds with their first film. <laughs> I think the worst thing you can do to a filmmaker is give him all the success in the world with the first film. Second is fine, third is fine, not the first film. You know everything that you have learned so far is not going to be of any use because it's going to be of a lot of use only if you need to put application to it, and you need to know how to deal with life. You will see a lot of things. You have to understand you're getting into a business where nobody wants you. You are going to make movies nobody wants you to make. You're going to people and you're going to ask them for their money to live your dream. <laughs> so there's so many things that you are going to face which I don't think you're prepared for. Nobody owes it to you. No one owes it to you. You want to be a filmmaker, it's only your responsibility. No one knows it to you. What film you want to make, how you want to do it, it's entirely your responsibility. Nothing is going to be given to you in a platter. Nobody's sitting there waiting for you to come and, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just change everything. Nobody wants you. Everybody is very happy. You have to understand cinema is art for the artist, for the filmmaker who wants to create art, but for the man who's the patron of the art is also a businessman. The man who's going to give you the money to make a film is a businessman. It's, it's a well you're going to draw the water from. But the, that well, if it runs dry, then there'll be no more water there, right? So you have to figure out a way where you make films and you give back so that, you know, you continue making films. And there's a reason to that, which I want to tell you. The reason is that you know, you, a lot of filmmakers lose their way, and especially it happens to filmmakers. It will not happen to engineers and doctors and other people, but it often happens to filmmakers. They lose themselves in their own greatness. They, they very, they, there's a hell of a lot of peer pressure that they walk into the world with. They walk into the world with wanting to be Fellini or Scorsese or someone or someone, and they, they forget that they need to be themselves. You don't really need to follow in anyone's footsteps. You need to create your own footsteps. And you can do that by being yourself. The biggest thing that you can bring to the industry is you yourself. Where you are coming from, what your life has been, what is your perspective, what is your point of view. And a lot of filmmakers lose that the moment they walk in. They want to imitate something that has impressed them. They want to, every because what you are is original. You are a sum of lots of unoriginal, cliched things, but the sum total is original. And I'll, I'll not just say things because it, sometimes it sounds like I'm giving some kind of a lecture. I'll, I'll give you examples in the sense, the many times in your life you, have, you take decisions and those decisions that you take, people around you will always tell you, you must not take them. When I went into the film industry, I had no film school education. There was FTI, there was... Jamia Melia, there was a small course in XIC, but there are really not many, very many film schools then that I was aware of. And I was far too educated to go in there and ask for a job, which is what everybody told me, because I was studying to be a scientist. I'd finished my studies and then went to Bombay. And I carried a bag full of books, which in itself is, was intimidating in the industry because when I went there and I realized that a lot of people don't read in the industry. The moment they get into films, they stop reading. They, they, the, the, they don't have the habit of reading. And I had to hide my books 
because if I carried my books, I, I didn't have a place to stay. I had to hide my books because that meant that I will not get any job. So I had to hide my education. And the first thing is that kicked in was my survival instinct. I wanted to get into a place and I realized that that place was Prithvi Theatre, which will not allow anyone who's not already working there. And nobody knew me and why would they want me there? And the first thing I did was, I said, I walked in to the cafe and asked Ujwal, there's a manager there and asked him that, can I get a job as a waiter? And he, he looked at me and he said, why would you want to work as a waiter? I said, no, I, I need a job and I would work as a waiter. He said, I don't need any waiter. I said, I don't want money from you. I'll, I'll serve during the lunch time and evenings I'll be free. It was a hard negotiation. He was too guilty of not me giving me a free job. I really wanted, he did not know that why I wanted that job very badly. So we worked out a deal where I said, whatever food your customers don't take, I can eat that food at the end of the day and I'll take the job. I started working the very third day I served a friend in that restaurant in Prithvi Theatre. And I realized at that time, and that was, I'm talking about 1992, 93, when there were no studios, nothing. The film, a lot of films were made by few families and you had to have a lot of experience to get in there. A rank newcomer will find no place there. But the one thing I learned was, we, we are in a country where everybody likes anything that's given to them free, right? And that's the thing that I used to get in everywhere. I got into Prithvi because I didn't want money. I started going to every single studio, started offering my services to write. I had the capacity to write a lot and for free, without asking for credit, without asking for money. And I think within two, three years, things worked out very well and I was writing the first daily soaps and I was getting a lot of money. I was 22 and I was making three lakhs a month in the year 1995. And that was a lot of money then. And within, after making two, working for two, three months, I made a lot of money. Came, they came and offered my way, which offered me 10,000 bucks a month. But the condition was I quit everything else. And the person who gave me that offer, he said, I can only pay you for 10 months because my budget, total budget is one lakh. And I was making three lakhs a month. And I went back to my family. I knew that I wanted to take that job, take that offer. My whole family, everyone told me that after three years of struggle, you're suddenly making so much money. Everything is working for you. Why do you want to take that offer? I said, I don't know. And that's the film that I really want to do. And I really want to do that film. And the fights went on. People stopped talking to me. And I picked up that film and that film was Satya. And it, it's it's... It's, it's always the choices that you make because somewhere instinctively I said, this is what I want to do. Everything else is going to make me money. Everything else was making me secure. It was making me secure. It would have sorted my life out. It was making me secure. And consciously choosing that path against all odds, it made my life miserable for the next few years because Satya was not made in 10 months. Satya was made in two and a half years. Satya was made in two and a half years and we had to figure out how to survive. Food was not a problem because working with Ramoji, you got food <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but you know, where do you go back to? Where do you hide? What do you do? My two and a half years I spent in editing rooms. I spent mixing in Chennai. That was also my introduction to Chennai. I spent four, five years here. And you know, it's always those choices, always choosing those films and saying no to things that everybody wanted me to do. As those choices that probably brought me to a point and in the beginning I used to think maybe one day I'll get to a point where life will be secure. But even today I have to fight and struggle for my next film. Even today I have to sit down and work backwards. And what I've figured out in all these years is that we all, often when we leave film school, the first thing we do is, we of course we want to make art and of course we want to create art. But we somehow feel that being an artist gives us a license a license which has so much of freedom that we can get away with anything. It doesn't have any responsibility because I'm just an artist, I'm expressing myself and all that is fine. And we think because we are an artist, we'll find money or we'll find some kind of a thing and we stand up for our rights and we fight for things. Thinking is world's responsibility, it is not. You are making a film that costs money. 
making a movie is not like writing a book making a movie is not painting a canvas where all you need is something that doesn't cost you money making a movie costs money it's a passion it's a art form that costs money and that's always somebody else's money and that is something that you should not and must not forget and if i want to make that one film then it's fine you can take it for granted but if i make sure and if you take it my responsibility that my film recovers the cost or brings it to a point where the man who's given the me the money feels secure maybe some people just want an award and recognition maybe something if you know where we getting the money from and to what end you give back i can guarantee you will be making a second film with no problems if you keep that responsibility with you you'll be making a second film and third film and fourth film and that's exactly what i have done in the sense i've realized over a period of time that i want my freedom and for my freedom i must pay a price and that price is that i cannot have emis very early on in life i realized that i have emis my emis will start making decisions for me so i never took anything on loan from a bank i don't have any emis you don't make those choices where things pull you down you don't make those choices where somebody takes it away and my freedom came and i realized over a period of time that a lot of people or producers in the industry a lot of people who make movies other than directors i'm talking about people who actually green light your movies a lot of them don't know what works everybody pretends to know what works everybody feels very secure because if something that you're doing references what has worked in the past it makes them feel good they feel deep inside that okay a film like this has worked in the past so this will also work and they feel secure and they give you the money and they are often looking at you to see your confidence to see how sure you are about what you want to do and long time back i realized i'm making movies that might not make sense on paper but maybe they will see why i'm doing that after i've made it but to reach from the point of wanting to make it to after having made it is a journey i must take and to take that journey i must get the money and i would often budget, i always work backwards and which is something that i always tell everyone even my films that i produce with my newcomers i do not green light them till they have worked on it backwards till they have not minimized the cost i work i make films at the lowest cost possible and what i always did was i realize the studio wants to know why am i making this film so i would minimize the budget i'll add a fee to the film and i would often go to the film make producer and it came to that discussion point of why we should make a film i said trust me and for that trust i'll forfeit my fees it's very important i added fees but i could have easily taken it out in the beginning but i would add a fees and make sure that they know that i'm forfeiting the fees and that's how i got to keep a nawazuddin instead of a big star in wasepur that's how i got to make devdi the way i wanted to make it that's how i got to make all those films and it became my responsibility and even after that i would carry my own films to try and sell them the world over I, when they told me your films are not selling overseas i had to figure out how to sell my film overseas and that's how i discovered the festivals so there's a lot of responsibility you carry it's almost a filmmaker's job is 50% being an mba 50% being a manager you are managing your actors you are managing your team you are making 100 people on the set believe in your dream it's not their dream they are working to fulfill your dream and that's a lot of responsibility and that cannot that's that's the responsibility with which you cannot afford to be so arrogant that you look down on all the people who are working with you if you can't take your team with you trust me you will not make more than one or two films is very important i will have no money and my team will come and will make a film we made gulal over 6 years every single person who worked on gulal worked for free from the every actor to the music director to everyone and over 7 years the whole industry did not want us to make the film every diwali would go and shoot and we made the film because we were all equals we went there we lived that passion we made that film and that was the only way we could change system because trust me nobody wants you here nobody owes it to you and nobody is going to have time to waste it on you it's all up to you so when you step out there is where the real learning will begin when you step out there is how you will start to figure things out 
there's never a point you know everything i still don't know anything i i mean every day you learn something new so don't go there with thinking that i know everything and there's nothing more to be learned otherwise then your journey is over and it's ended you've lived your life so it's, it's better to not know anything and step in there and i i i hope all of you guys do well because for me is the younger filmmakers who are constantly changing the language of cinema and it's the younger filmmakers that i look forward to it's good the last two years have been uh, must have been fun for you all and i hope it has been uh, rewarding so i was thinking to myself what do i tell youngsters and kids these days my kids don't listen to me uh, i guess i didn't listen to my parents too at the at this age i'm going to give you the bad news first and then how do i put this you're not going to get very far in life with what you have learned so far it's true believe me it's true you're going to you're going to grow and advance in life for what you're going to learn from today onwards so for a moment don't think or don't don't believe that it's sunk it's coming to you two years of being here you have acquired what it takes that's the bad news so let's get it over with the good news is that hopefully what you have learned is how to balance the creative the intellect and the gut so it's what you have learned in the last 2 years perhaps gives you a balance of these three vital components and all i can not say is trust the gut that's what is going to take you forward you've all learned the skills you've all learned the art and you've learned the tricks of the trade this is the internet the information era the google the generation uh, so i'd like uh, i've been reading about this and i thought i'd share it with you it says it goes like this you can google for an answer you can google for a partner you can google for a career but you can't google to find out what's in your heart the passion that lifts you upwards so all i can say is it's very true trust your passion trust your your inner in a voice you must keep knocking till you as 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 i was told once keep knocking till your knuckles bleed but you have to pick yourself up and continue that's the only way you're going to achieve your goals in life if you achieve it in the easy way it's no fun you haven't gotten the experience you can blame it on lady luck but you can't blame it on experience you can't credit experience and when you succeed eventually we all will because they say efforts never fail and eventually we all will succeed and when you do succeed you become you you get to a position where you can give and as the, as the saying goes you have to give before you receive so as we all wait for success keep this in mind it's extremely important success leads to the greatest failure which is arrogance and pride and in my career in this business of being here for 25 or 30 odd years i've seen many successful people go down because of their arrogance and pride and i hope all of you become successful and i hope all of you do not imbibe those two qualities they are dangerous failure can lead to great successes which is humility and learning <laughs> on a more lighter note when you do get your oscars or whatever awards you get think of us here <laughs> it gives us no greater pride than to hear of your successes that's what we are here for that's what the teachers are here for it gives them great pride it motivates us and to do better and better and move on and when you watch your own work or when you watch the work of others the natural tendency is to find mistakes you might find mistakes with your own work you say the next time i'm going to do it better you watch somebody else's film you still watch mistakes 
you will learn from them for sure. That's what we all did and continue to do so.